OK, so what is a wind turbine? I think far from being a fatuous question, actually, that's really, really interesting. Another interesting thing, actually, is we used to call these wind generators, and now because of all the ridiculous jokes about wind generation, you can no longer put that as a title because you can guarantee you're going to get at least 100 posts of somebody joking about farting. So we all call them wind turbines these days just to stop those jokes. So a wind turbine, what is it? Well, we all think we know what it is. We think it's something you stick up in the wind and electricity comes out. And to a degree, that's perfectly true. But you can also look at it as a system, and it's a system of three components. There's an input side where the capture occurs. Then there's a conversion part, and then there's an output side where storage occurs. But if you think of those three parts, it changes your view a little bit. And far from being a fatuous and simplistic change of view, I think it's a fundamental change of view, actually. Because this bit, the conversion bit, the generator bit, is often seen as a producer. It says, oh, that should be able to produce such and such. Well, that's just not true in my mind. It can convert to an efficiency, but it produces absolutely nothing. Now, let's take the conservation of energy in the second law of thermodynamics to be true. That's for the purposes of this argument, and I understand that there are people who disagree with that, and that's another argument for another day. Let's just take that as true, that the conversion of energy and the second law of thermodynamics hold true. What that means is, when we take an energy input, and of course when we're talking about things like um, wind and water power and human power, then we're talking about mechanical energy. When we take energy as an input, and we convert it to an output, the output must always be lower than the input. And the reason for that is losses in the system. So if we look at a wind turbine, for instance, then we're governed by the Betts limit. Then so the available power that is being captured is always going to be less than the actual available power. Then we have a conversion loss and then we have a storage loss. So the output is always less than the input. Because what you're looking to do is improve efficiency, both of capture, conversion, and storage. So you get the most of what there is available to you. Now, that input is a mechanical thing that captures the wind, and it does it with blades or scoops or whatever it is that you want to stick on there. We'll capture that wind and turn that wind into rotation. That rotation is then put through this, where the rotation is turned into or converted to electrical energy. I think that saying that this produces something changes your view of it to thinking that it adds to the system, that somehow magically energy is created in here and is added to the system. It isn't. All that can happen here is that the captured available energy is converted at a degree of efficiency. That's it. It can't add to the system. It's just not possible. Then the output is stored and it's stored at another degree of efficiency. Now, something like this is a beautifully made machine. It's really tremendous. It's likely to be 98, 99% efficient. I don't know, but the conversion efficiency is going to be super high on something like this. This is an old DC fan motor, and the conversion efficiency is going to be something like 95, 96%. So we're probably talking about a 4% difference between those two motors. Something along those lines. Now, when we did our wind turbine, we didn't get a particularly wonderful result. We got about 5 volts or so and about 5 milliamps, something like that. So about 2.4. Uh, 5 volts, 5 milliamps. About 2, yeah, what was that? About 25 milliwatts, something like that. It's a small amount. We didn't get very good result at all. But when you take the uh, figures involved and you're looking at a blade, wind turbine blade of a half meter long, and the wind speed was 2.7 meters per second, then the available wind en energy, if we captured 100% of it, was 9 watts. Given the Betts limit and all that sort of stuff, then the expected output is in the order of 2 watts. So, at best, we're talking about 2 to 400 milliwatt milliamps that's going to be the output at around about 5 volts. That's if we did a really good job at it. So there's no way that this, in those conditions, is going to produce amps of power. It just can't do it. But when you think about something like this as being a producer, then you automatically ask yourself the question, why isn't it producing amps? But that's because you're thinking of it as a producer and not a converter. 
Something like this can only convert the input power to output power. If there isn't the input power, there won't be the output power. Uh, chances are this is, like I say, reasonably in good condition and reasonably efficient at what it does. And sure enough, I use silicon diodes, which is quite a voltage drop-on, that sort of stuff. But more than likely, the reason the result was rubbish is because those were bamboo blades, and I think I put them on the wrong way around. It was actually at the capture stage where the issue is going to be occurring. Not at this stage. This is just interesting because it's a nice piece of equipment that's easy to build something out of with a very high conversion efficiency. It's more than likely at the input stage. At the output stage, yeah, there may be issues with corrosion of the clips and again, voltage loss along there, maybe. But it's not going to be great. The real issue is going to be at the input, not at this conversion stage. But you think of this as being a producer. If it's not producing, you think this is the problem, or maybe the readings are the problem. Actually, it's not a producer, remember. It is a converter. If there isn't the input, there can't be the output. It can't output if there is no input. Now, we also put this into a hand crank system, and we did a hand crank blender, and we got something like 30 watts out of it, or something like that. It's pretty cool. And Stanford University produced a set of tables talking about human power. What it is that a, an athlete under standard conditions is able to um, produce and maintain over an hour. And they reckon that uh, an arm strength is going to be about 60 watts, pedal power is going to be about 100 to 150 watts. They even do breathing, which I think is about 0.4 of a watt or something. I don't know, but if you want to look it up through a Google search, you can find those tables. Just put that phrase in. And you can read what it is that an athlete can produce. Now, I'm a fat old boy who smokes too much, and I was able to bang out 30 watts, which I thought was awesome, to be honest. I mean, I was a bit puffed at the end of it, for sure. But I was able to bang out 30 watts from a hand crank version. And that's because I had better efficiency with the hand crank than we did with some bamboo blades the wrong way around. So the efficiency of the capture at the input side is always a critical thing. It's another reason we do so many different types of input side of things, because we're looking at different designs to improve that efficiency of capture. I tend not to concentrate so much on this because there are a lot of other people doing some awesome work and we're talking about 1 or 2% improvements. I don't think there's that much to be gained, to be honest, by looking at these differences in motors. I think most motors are going to perform quite well as generators. And then at the output stage when we're talking about batteries and conversion. But we do so much more on that, on the input, because the different input formats are going to have a bigger input than the conversion. This, as a producer, I think, is the wrong way to look at it. And I think that's the problem when you look at it like that. So when we're looking at a wind turbine, we're actually looking at a system of three components. And when you see that system of three components, I think you can see the parallels between a wind turbine, a water wheel, a pedal power, a flywheel, wave power, all of those things suddenly become, I think, all part of the same thing. There's a link between them all. All of them are capturing mechanical energy at an input stage. Then they're all going through a conversion stage, and then that is getting stored. So I think when you ask what is a wind turbine, and you look at a wind turbine as a system, you can then see it as part of the bigger family of these things. And I think it gives it a place within that family so that you can analyse and grasp what it is that's going on more clearly. Or at least that's the way I think about it. And so, like I say, I don't see these as producers. I just see them as conversion units. And if there is an issue, then I tend to look at the other side of that issue because that's more than likely where that issue is. It's extremely unlikely to be in the unit itself or in the diodes or in the meter leads or any of that. It's more than likely to be in the capture. Anyway, I thought I would share that conception of these things as being a system of components because I think it really helps put everything into a perspective. So all of the stuff that we've been doing actually has mostly been looking at the input capture side because I'm very interested in the input capture side of things. I'm not so interested, although I have been doing alternative motors, alternative generators, and the reason hasn't been to do with the efficiency of them, it's actually been to do with the cost of them and the availability of materials and the ability to home make it yourself. 
So I tend to look at different motors and uh, different devices on the conversion side of things as being things that are easy to get hold of or easy to build for the average uh, person at home with an average tool set. That's what interests me about those. On the input side of things, I'm interested very much in the different formats of input for capture of mechanical energy with um, sufficient efficiency in order to get an output. And I do that because, like I say, I see these things as systems and as a group of a family, and I wanted to share that with you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.